So that's all set. So, okay, so so uh, you could you can take back control. <laughs> okay, sounds great. And I think we're all set. I guess we could start letting people in. Am I still considered a, a host on this or a co-host? Yes. Okay. Do so you want I'm, me to make you the host? Uh, yeah, because I'm not. I'm not seeing how I can let Here. people in. I was able to let uh, you in earlier, but I'm okay. not. Seeing, uh, I'm not seeing anybody. So I made you a host, but if you could, um, or, oh, yeah. or Angie, if you could write. Yep, write I can. My name. I can make you a co-host, Amy, because I think you'll need, no, nope, cannot make you a co-host. I don't have that opportunity to. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and let these people in. So Okay, yeah, that can sounds you, good. Do you still have sharing capability? I do not. So if you could add me. Um, and if you need to remove me by. Uh, no, so if, if you click on participants at the bottom right and then hover next to Amy and then click more, mm -hmm. um, there should be the ability to make a co to make me a co-host. And I and think, George, I'll... you will have to do that. I don't have the rights to be able to make Amy a co-host. It's weird. I'm not able to find your names. I'm finding a, a waiting room here. It's uh, if you it, we should be down at the bottom. I think the joined folks are towards the bottom of that list. Or maybe if you admit everyone, then maybe we'll pop up. Either way, whatever is easier for you. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> Let me go ahead. And... But as of right now, George, we don't have the cap. Either of us do not have the capability to share our screen. I'm, and see, I'm not seeing your names in the in the list yeah. here. That's what's throwing throwing me here for a loop. Boy, they. <laughs> and it's so weird because initially I saw both of your names. So. Hmm. Do you want me to leave and come back? Uh, no, stay put. Let, let me go ahead and start adding the people in, and maybe that'll trigger it. That's, it might be a weird thing. Yeah, this you can tell is my first time doing this. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine. It's a learning experience for all, for sure. Welcome. We're so excited to have you with us. If you're just coming into our from the waiting room, um, you are in the experiential virtual spaces session and as you have uh, as you come in feel free to uh, uh, we'd love for you to welcome yourself by introducing yourself in the chat um, sharing your name and your title are you seeing the uh, list increase or yes it's okay yeah. So now that people are added, um, maybe if you click the participants at the bottom to see if my name is listed. George, I'm more than happy to help uh, add people in if that would be helpful at all. Admit people. I have that op I have that ability, um, okay. but I do not have the screen share ability. I'm going to take off the chat for a moment.
Hi, Gloria. Welcome, Ethan. Great to have you here. If you're just joining us, um, we are excited that you are here with us. Um, please feel free to welcome yourself in the chat. Um, Andrea, it's glad you're here with us. Clint, welcome. Candy, it's good to see you. We're going to be uh, starting here shortly. We're just navigating a couple of technical problems. Okay, fantastic. So I now have the ability, <laughs> of course, because I was heading towards the, the Discord help desk. Uh, so I will will exit out of that. No problem at all. So I believe we're all okay technical wise. So we could go ahead and get started. Absolutely. Uh, real, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. I just want to remind people, uh, to please mute your microphones during the session. And I Great. believe everyone was, in, uh, when you came in, we are recording today's session. So uh, just to, to for full transparency there. So again, welcome. Uh, we're really excited to have you all joining us today. If you hadn't seen, we would love for you to introduce yourself in the chat. Um, my name is Angela Dick. I am um, the manager with the learning design team at teaching with teaching and learning at uh, with technology at Penn State University. I'm joined today by my colleague and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Amy Kuntz. Uh, I'm the Learning Innovation Strategic Initiatives Coordinator uh, here at Penn State's Teaching and Learning with Technology. Thank you so much, Amy. And it's so great to have all of you. We're seeing the introductions come in. Um, super awesome to have you join us today. We love to have conversations. So along the way, if you have questions, Amy or I will be moderating the chat. Feel free to uh, post those questions into chat and keep our conversation going. Um, the goals for today and our objectives for today, um, uh, during our time, we're going to be focusing on experiential virtual spaces. We will do first some high level setting on what is experiential virtual spaces through a program that we offer by our team here at Penn State. We will then uh, share a little bit about affordances and constraints around the use of this kind of technology. And we've prepared some really wonderful faculty use cases to share with you. And then from there, we'll go into opportunities to brainstorm on key aspects of how to craft instructional lessons to take advantage of these types of spaces. So with that said, let us provide a little context. Um, each year, Teaching and Learning with Technology offers at Penn State offers a program to our faculty, Penn State faculty and staff called Faculty Engagement Awards or FEA for short. We love our acronyms here at Penn State. So you'll hear Amy and I uh, probably speaking in acronyms. Each year, this award changes and shifts depending on the technology change, um, technology changes, strategic priorities, and overall assessed interest or needs from our faculty in the learning community. The FEA award winners are provided support in the form of faculty development, instructional design consultation, technology funding, and other supports, depending on the topic and project for the year. Last year, the focus was on experiential virtual spaces, and this year, the focus is on AI-powered webcam for remote synchronous courses. We'll post the link here in the chat um, for the program so that you can kind of browse uh, what it looks like. And it looks like Amy already did. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, and so feel free to click on that and browse around. So with that said, um, what is, some of you might be asking yourself, and maybe that was part of your decision on coming to our session today, on you know what, it, what are experiential virtual spaces? So let's do a little bit of level setting on what that might mean. Um, experiential virtual spaces consist of a dynamic virtual environment that has embedded live video and or expressive avatars. It offers free movement around the space and a few tools to go a, a step further, such as um, many of these tools have uh, spatial sound where sound becomes louder as you are approach someone else in that environment. Really the essence of the goal of an experiential virtual space is to have class feel like you are close together. Um, even when you might be far apart or geographically dispersed. This is done by the affordances of the technology and the quality, the, the quality design and implementation of the practices of how you use that technology. So by a raise of hands in Zoom, um, 
me make sure that we have, yeah. So in the react, if you go down to your reactions tab, if you're not familiar with Zoom, um, at the very bottom, you should have uh, a smiley face with reactions. If you click on that by a raise of hands, how many folks um, have explored using experiential virtual spaces in the past? Okay, so I see Denise and Greg, Katie, awesome. Clint, great, thank you for that. Laura, okay, so we have a, a variety of folks here, um, and if you could feel free to go ahead and lower your hand, um, that have used these types of tools in the past. So thank you for sharing. And we're gonna take a look uh, shortly on the different tools and approaches. So with that said, um, we're gonna first take a look at, um, here is one experiential virtual space, uh, Mozilla Hubs. We are a, where you are kind of that third person looking out over two other classmates um, that are currently in this environment. Excuse me for a second. And so you can see, in this environment, you have buttons on the bottom where you can turn on and turn off voice, share your screen. It plays, it gives you a place and allows you to add a variety of objects to this room, such as 3D models. You have a react button uh, where you can use emojis and you also have some chat features. So this kind of gives you a general idea and a look and feel of what these types of environments can look like, especially for those of you that may not have that experience. Um, Kind of exploring that env those environments. So, what other tools besides Mozilla Hubs do we have, or have we explored? Um, we've taken a look at a variety of tools here through our investigation of faculty engagement awards. There are many types of experiential virtual spaces, and each tool has similar features and attributes. Um, so, during the fall of 2022. Um, our team, we explored in, in relationship to our faculty, and we're going to show you some use cases, which are going to be super excited. Um, but, you know, what are some of these affordances? And for those of you that kindly raised your hand and expressed that you've had um, um, experience in some of these spaces, feel free to go ahead and pop in the chat if you're willing, um, what tools you might have explored with um, as we're kind of taking a look down through this. So the first one here is spatial chat. And um, you with spatial chat you it is available on computers and mobile um however uh it tends to be a little bit more low performing on um from a, a mobile mobile side of things there is no available vr headset in general um you know in terms of uh meta quest things like that the cost and size limits um sometimes there are free concurrent uh free for five concurrent users or more or up to 25. um and there are recording availability for a cost. However, you will hear as we kind of walk down through each of these, we did not take advantage of the recording availability because of the way that we put our tools through um, a review process. And it wasn't something um, that we were able to do or, or wanted to do for the work that we were currently doing. Um, and then you'll also see the ability for students and, and everyone to share images. And this was based on um, you know, uh, being able to do this in overall per, uh, permissions. So Gather Town, um, which um, it was formerly Gather Town, but now is Gather, um, is available on computers and mobile. Um, it does not have the availability of a VR headset. Uh, it's free for 25 concurrent users. So a cost you'll hear is part of our affordances um, and um, affordances and uh, constraints that we'll talk a little bit about. Um, the recording is available through third party software, however, we did not explore that again you'll hear that as part of um, the list and then. Um, are there is the ability to share images or other items um, and for this only the owner could create and share objects in the room, so this is giving you a sense of what each of these are kind of looking like. Um, and we'll we'll hit on each of these and then move into some uh, discussion. Mozilla Hubs is available on computer and mobile as well. Um, it is available on a VR headset um, 
for uh, in general, uh, free in each room. So uh, I've seen Amy posted the, the links in the chat. Feel free to kind of click on them and kind of look at each one of them as we're kind of looking down through. Um, the cost and size limits um, are free. Uh, each room has a recommended room capacity of 25 users. So some of these performance features of each of the tools kind of weighed in to our faculty decision making on what they have and how they were going to be using it. Again, this had the availability of a third party recording, uh, which we did not take advantage of. And then we were able to share images uh, based on the overall room permissions. Um, so that was available for that. And some of you I've seen in the chat has um, experience with art steps. Um, so feel free to chime in in the chat on this one. Um, art steps is available on computers and mobile. Um, it is, um, it does have a VR a component to it only for a mobile VR. So like Apple store through Android, not through Quest as of yet. However, that may have changed. Um, cost and size limit free. Um, and there are some unknown limits to the views of chat feature area. And in terms of um, recording that was not available in Art Steps, although I, I'm trying to think who said this in the chat. Um, feel free, Greg, to chime in um, if you have some um, a, a different information or um, from your own perspective as well. And um, and then in terms of avail uh, ability for students or anyone to share images, um, you cannot collaborate. It's only a one person can kind of create and share objects in the room. So there's a bit of a uh, workaround for some of this as well. Um, and so, and then Rec Room was also on our list, but we did not go into any great depth with rec room exploration. We did it at a surface level because none of our faculty chose to adopt it based on their needs and how they were um, implementing throughout this type of this uh, program that we were offering. So with that said, um, we're gonna go ahead and, and transition kind of into uh, just a general discussion at this point. Um, have you used these tools? And we have had some folks that have already indicated that they have. Um, you shared which ones, and can you kind of expand a little further and tell us, um, did you, um, have you used others that weren't listed? And I seen, um, Denise, you've already indicated Second Life and VR, um, a VR company. Let's see here, Clint, thank you. I'm now just kind of scrolling down through. You have um, definitely some experiences in this space. Anyone else? Give this a moment. Amy, you're probably watching chat a little better than I am. Uh, was there any others that were mentioned? I didn't want to miss anybody. Um, so one was just kind of a proprietary VR company. Can't remember the name right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's there's lots of items in this space and um, a few that I will mention later on. Um, when we first looked at spatial chat, it was free for 50. And they did say that they were going to decrease it mm -hmm. down to 25. Um, and then this is probably getting to the constraints is, they said, oh, it's going to stay 25 people forever. And then three weeks later, right before mm -hmm. the start of the fall semester, they decrease it to five. So <laughs> we quickly looked at, at other comparable products because mm -hmm. that one was a little bit different of, of um, more of the kind of webcam video uh, elements. Uh, and so Denise says, yes, the company was going to customize mm -hmm. for us. Fantastic. Thanks so much. So um, with those of you using the tools, is there anything that you would want to mention um, for those tools? Feel free to pop it into the chat. Uh, but for those of you exploring, let's talk a little bit about uh, affordances and constraints and actually show you some of these tools. So our, the idea here is hopefully um, giving you a little bit of some insight to what these tools look like. So um, with our, our constraints, we're going to take a look around the those affordances and taking a look at affordances first. So first off, we've listed a few affordances and I would encourage those in the, the chat to feel free to list other affordances as well, uh, especially with uh, your, um, your experiences. Um, so the first one is around building connection. Tools like this do make it easier, right? To relate to your peers, to improve relationships with your teacher and your faculty. Um, and a lot of times uh, when considering these types of tools, you there may be geographic distance between you and, and your students and your faculty, right? Um, so there's, and, and these 
affordances are kind of uh, grounded in, in some research as well. The second is the ability to choose and in, to engage from a user perspective. So you have that power of choice and we all know that um, engagement, uh, increased appetite for learning um, kind of goes up as that uh, power shifts into the users or the learners to be able to kind of select and choose their own pathway. Um, the third area here is explore, in, in exploring the literature, what we found was 48% uh, found an impact on the learning experience. Um, 42 were satisfied on their experience and 30% seen an increase in collaboration holistically. And so in terms of some constraints, um, what we have found is um, ever evolving spaces usually, um, given the newer nature, of these tools, they're consistently evolving. And so Amy kind of talked about it from a pricing structure. Um, they're changing, they're rebranding, like Ga Gather Town is now Gather. Those types of things kind of move pretty quickly. And as you're kind of building and planning with your faculty, right, um, kind of keeping that in mind and seeing those changes can quickly occur. Um, the second, it, it takes a, users a bit of time um, to learn. Um, than maybe more like the traditional uh, tools such as Zoom. So a lot of times there are support structures early in the courses or early in the um, learning experience that you will want to do um, to just to make sure your your faculty and your instru your instructors and your students are all um, in the, a good place being able to move forward. Um, Many times, um, well, there's also a big push, and we talked about this already, uh, towards the cost, right? Um, and, and so that can definitely be a, um, a restraint. And many times we learn, we lean on communities for troubleshooting. So many of you might be a, a campus school for your LMS. More than likely, you've looked at that community for troubleshooting. And so some of these being just as new as they are, those communities are not necessarily as large or robust. Um, and so sometimes that can be um, problematic as well. So with that said, um, we're gonna go ahead and quickly move into spatial chat and gather examples. And I'm gonna turn this over to Amy because I think this is uh, one of the best parts of our sharing today. Great, thank you so much. And so again, thank you for all those who um, not only mentioned what tools, but also pointed to some of the, the examples. And so uh, we always like to hear examples and, and showcase the work of our faculty. Uh, and so with this, I just, I know that we have new people coming in. Uh, so when we looked at spatial chat, Again, it was free for 50 people. We knew it was gonna be down to 25 concurrent people at a time. Um, but then right before the start of the semester, they decreased it down to five without warning. Uh, so they kind of backtracked on their, their promise of having it free for 25 forever. Um, so while we could still gather some insights from here, uh, we, we quickly paid for spatial chat for um, a few months. We then looked at gather, which was free for 25 at the time, and now they, they've decreased. Um, so one tool that we're going to explore after we look at these examples um, is called High Hive, which is free for um, even larger classes than 25, but you could only do 200 minutes uh, in a given month. So um, that's kind of what we're probably leaning towards for this type of environment uh, moving forward. And so uh, Denise uh, Patowski, she is a faculty member who teaches a behavioral science and business course, um, 200 minutes uh, for the room that's there. So you could always create a second room, <laughs> uh, Denise, uh, or a second account uh, to bypass that. Um, so she used spatial chat, which is pictured here, uh, for her hybrid graduate business course. Um, this her campus is near the Philadelphia area. So there's a lot of large corporations that were even exploring similar places like that. So it was really important to prepare them for the workforce that they might have already been working in or about to embark upon with that career change. Uh, so she had four online synchronous meetings for about two hours in spatial chat. Uh, she used a basic avatar. So if you're farther away from someone, it's just kind of a, the letter D for her 
um, Denise. And then when you get closer, the, the webcam video came into space. Um, so I'll have a bigger picture on the next slide, but she had the class kind of come up here in this area as a large class to talk about things. And she quickly said, hey, get into small groups. So they had these little kind of chair areas um, and she was able to navigate. Uh, and so the people in this area could not hear the people in, in this area. She also utilized a reward system through STARS to award class participation, both in that small group and class-wide. Uh, so this is what it looks like on the larger level. Uh, so you, it's a close-up of the room. You could see that this is where the class convened. She pre-made STARS that she could quickly navigate. Uh, and she also had student names populated here. We blurred out their last names uh, for privacy reasons. But you could see that a lot of them had interaction. <laughs> so this group was really great. They got more. Um, some only had one star or zero stars, but some had two or three. Uh, and so... Uh, because of they of being pre-made, she could quickly grab one and drag it uh, everywhere. And similar to Mozilla Hubs that was pictured earlier, they're all very similar but different. And so you could hide your webcam or audio, um, use the text chat, share your screen. Um, and then what's pictured here is the, the megaphone. So if you wanted to say, hey, everyone, come back to the center of the room, um, that megaphone aspect was uh, available. Uh, what I always try to do is strive for experiencing, experimenting in these spaces myself. So in addition to my full-time job, I've been an adjunct instructor for 16 years, uh, both in-person, online asynchronous, and online synchronous and blended. Um, and so what I decided to do as an alternative to Zoom to have online office hours. To encourage participation, I usually have it as a recitation style, uh, especially for exam reviews coming up. <laughs> and I usually have three to four students when I when I focus it on that hey let's review let's study for the exam or this part is is harder because we're getting into Microsoft Access um, and so uh, it was really nice because I could I could go over some small important aspects and then have them work independently in one area of these spaces um, but compared to Zoom I was able to dynamically move and they could see that I'm coming instead of if you join a breakout room you kind of poop pop pop up and appear <laughs> so you could kind of scare students uh, since they don't know that you're you're coming towards them uh, and so with this students could act actually see that I was actively helping others and knowing that I was going to be on their way uh, so that was one affordance uh, as far as longevity um, I decided to not do it this semester because I'm trying out a different technology but I might uh, do it this this um, summer course <laughs> uh, and then as far as these spaces asynchronously, that is a great suggestion. So we are going to have some examples um, for spatial um, itself. Uh, you can add even artifacts in here, like as far as images or PowerPoints or slides and say, hey, go into the space and, and view it. Uh, we have some examples coming up uh, and other tools that did do it asynchronously. So great question. Uh, so currently, what are some other possibilities of these tools? And a quick uh, demo of High Hive. Um, some of the others that are free above five that we had looked at as Topia, which again was free for 25, but at the, now currently as of April 2023 is 10 individuals. Uh, Work Adventure is free for 15. And then High Hive is free for unlimited with 200 minutes a month. Uh, and so we do want to take the time to kind of showcase and and go through these examples. There was a lot of others that we identified, but have gone to a trial period, and then you have to pay no matter what the size, and so they're not listed here anymore. And so before, um, I believe Angie's going to post a link in the chat, but uh, knowing that we're connected in Zoom, <laughs> uh, do not connect audio because then we'll hear each other. Uh, so I'm going to hide both of my webcam and microphone but then you could click next and join their demo space. Um, so here, um, if others join, we'll be able to see them kind of list and pop up 
um, similarly. And then this one has a little arrow of what direction you're going. So it knows um, where I'm at and I'll make this a little bit bigger. And um, they have it kind of set up like your, your office. Um, so it pops up um, if people are working in a particular area, um, if say, hey, I want to work independently, I'm here. Uh, and so we have one person joining. So again, my camera is not on. Um, but if we get close, it makes us kind of private and talk to one another. So hi. <laughs> uh, so maybe I will quickly show uh, and enable my camera. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Sometimes it doesn't like um, being backgrounds of of items, uh, multiple places at once. So give me one second. There we go. Uh, so. Uh, Angie, let's try to find where you are at. I believe that's you. And so when we get, get close together, it pops us up. I have my camera available and others feel free. And so here I am. <laughs> um, I have the background because I'm working at home today. Uh, but you can see if others have their cameras on, um, if they're near our space and in our little circle, we could talk, but no one else outside of our little circle can hear us. And then when we want to move, and leave, it's leaving a little huddle. So now Angie uh, and yeah, so they, they separated. <laughs> uh, and so again, we could kind of see where people are and move around the space. They have little lounges um, and much, much more. So this is a demo space. You could feel free to come to it later on. Um, everything that we have here today, including the sides will be, be shared out. Um, so for timing's sake, I'm going to exit to go over some other examples. Uh, and so our next tool is Mozilla Hubs. Uh, and so this was free at the time. And then uh, recently they decided to move to a pricing model, but there are lots of things that we could gain from this and another tool that we're um, going to be using that is free for unlimited uh, individuals. And so the Mozilla Hubs examples that we wanna cover um, really focus as an example of what we could do for our asynchronous. So Jim Hart, uh, does a small group communication course in the Northeast campuses, including Penn State Scranton, like the office, the, the TV show. And he had his students for an in-person class create infographics um, pre-pandemic. During the pandemic, he put it on a pause um, and um, he used to actually print them out and have it on the Scranton campus everywhere. Um, trying to be mindful of printing, uh, and knowing that a lot of students might not go to on campus as much, he said, well, I wanna do these infographics, but I don't want to print them, but I want to point them um, to resources that we could use as part of our research fair and much, much more. And so we said, okay, well, let's create the infographics as you typically do, but let's put the infographics in Mozilla Hubs. And so students actually presented on this instead of in-person in class, it was a, uh, they had a hybrid day where they stayed at home, they worked on the infographics in teams. So one team member stayed with the infographic and everyone else took turns and rotated around. And then once everyone had a chance, they swapped places and their peer uh, presented on the infographic and everybody walked around. Uh, since then, it then was also used in the research fair where people could go asynchronously um, and as a resource um, going forward. And so we are going to join the room and feel free to um, join as well. I believe Angie's going to put the link. And so this again is very similar. This utilizes an avatar. So uh, you could change your avatar 
uh, a lot of them tend to like the uh, fox for some reason, which is down here. Um, but you could use whatever you want. And then again, just please make sure that you click mute <laughs> uh, so we don't have everyone. Uh, so again, you could uh, join yourself, but if you use the forward and backward key, uh, you could do that. And then the computer mouse, if you're on a mouse, you could pan around. And so um, people are joining and leaving. Uh, so if you go up closer, you could kind of see the space. Yes, um, but unfortunately, again, this has gone to a, a pricing model. But Greg, stay to the end. I'll give you a, a great alternative to art steps <laughs> that we're going towards. That's going to be the great reveal. Um, but uh, as you see, like here, some of these are um, a little bit hard to read. So we said, how about if people want to see what the references are to link it? So you can link out to um, external items. So we have the more standard picture. Um, yes, I'm, I'm unmuted in hubs. Oh, thank you very much. So I will mute myself. <laughs> uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, and so uh, that is just one way and we could do this. So what we were going to do, look, here's other people. We have our little avatars um, and you could interact with one another. Um, and again, with, with the spatial audio, the closer you are to someone. Uh, so we, we were going to do a second room to add the previous year's student work, which we have permission for, but then we got the notice that Mozilla Hubs is moving to that pricing model. So if you have a room, you could still keep it, which is what we're, we're showcasing today, but we're gonna move to a tool called Spatial, different than Spatial Chat, uh, which we'll demo in a little bit. So again, uh, feel free to use this as a, as a, a guide um, or an idea of something a little bit different. So I'm going to exit out of Mozilla Hubs. You could still explore if you so desire, because our, our next one takes that same concept and applies it to a different perspective. So Terry Clementi teaches contemporary skills for business professionals, where students created interview um, videos for entrepreneurial resources in the Northeast Pennsylvania area. Uh, instead of just having a list of videos to watch on YouTube, we said, let's do an, a gallery and then we could have everyone present this way. Uh, so we put the videos up on uh, behalf of the students. So students didn't, ha didn't have to upload them. We did that because it, it was a little bit trickier um, and students watched each video um, in the gallery asynchronously. So they said, hey, let's just see what the space looks like when we join all together during class time. And they did it for about 15 minutes. But they said, with everyone playing the videos, we want to see how this would be used in a business area where you don't have everyone come at once. It could be people coming and going. So throughout this week, join the Mozilla Hubs, play the videos, and write a reflection piece about your experience. Uh, we used a tool called See, Think, Wonder, which is a thinking activity from Harvard School of Education. So they had to write, what do you see? <laughs> what, uh, what do you think about it? What questions do you have? And what ponderings do you have? Um, and what wonderings? And so the students really liked that element uh, of reflection. They could see the benefits both from the, the educational perspective and the business perspective. Uh, and then they, they actually did a presentation to the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce about the art gallery. And then the chamber actually gave us experience. So while we won't be talking about the in-depth part of the how-to for Mozilla Hubs, um, I do wanna point out the fact that we saw everybody's avatars, uh, but another example was to use this as a presentation area as an alternative for um, Zoom. And that was done in a Game 180 course, which I have to get the title, Art and Science of Virtual Worlds. So if there are, the whole course is about creating virtual worlds like this, let's actually be in that space. So they, they used Unity for the creation of their virtual worlds, but then they used Mozilla Hubs to, to gather and learn each week. And that was an online synchronous course. So now uh, we're going to go over some examples of art steps. <laughs> I know uh, we already had one great example uh, within the chat, but we wanted to explore some 
um, from, from our own perspective. And so the first one <laughs> is um, Art Steps allows you to create 3D art galleries that can be viewed in virtual reality. Uh, as Angie mentioned, it's not virtual reality on high-end systems like the Oculus or the MetaQuest, uh, but if you have a mobile device, you can actually view it in VR and on something like a viewer like this. So you put your phone um, in here and you could kind of go here and peek around and feel like you're you're truly there. Um, and so these viewers can are cheap. Um, this one I actually got free at a conference um, and some of them, they're all less than $15. Uh, so for this example, we actually uh, did it as part of the virtual transformation leadership development experience. This was trying to teach students to be uh, agents of change as future leaders. Uh, this included diversity, equity, inclusion, and that just society. So we touched upon some of the concepts. And while we could have just had some images in Canvas and talk about it, we really wanted to kind of shake them up, kind of out the, their environment and really immerse in this space. So as part of the online asynchronous course, they had to come here and explore one part of the hallway, uh, which was three images. So Art Steps allows you to do some guide points so we could have the image um, and then you could even bring it up and have some information in the licensed material. The other part with Art Steps is if you wanna teleport to a particular area, you just point your mouse down towards the bottom and click. Um, and then you could also again, zoom up. So we did add more information for each of these articles. Um, and so this space has lots of different pictures. Um, students, when they were doing this each week, at first they just looked at, at that particular week, but it was nice to see them reflect at the end, like, okay, well, now I'm going to totally revisit earlier ones, make connections, um, and that aspect. So um, for this, while it was only three images in a given week, they tended to explore, um, they related it to different instructional videos that they also did, uh, et cetera. And while I did give a preview of the See, Think, Wonder, uh, I wanted to actually have a, a more detailed explanation. And so again, the, the See, Think, Wonder is a reflection protocol and it was created by Project Zero at the Harvard School of Education. So uh, this is going to be in the handouts. You could reflect on these ones. Um, and they do have a guide if you actually go to their website. And um, this is a, a general practice. It's used in the arts a lot. But we've actually done this in, in VR. That's not arts at all. And it really helps kind of make connections um, to the content. Why, why are we doing this compared to something that's not as tech savvy? Okay, um, so we've already had some of this, uh, but what do you see as the added benefits of placing student uh, work in these style of places and spaces? I think, Amy, for me, you know, being able to see those examples and interact with them in real time with others, um, you know, as you kind of mentioned with Art Steps, being able to like, it's like walking in a gallery, right? Um, and I see Greg's has um, some some thoughts in chat there for you. Great. Yeah, so bring a tangible experience to our distant learners, for sure. And so the nice thing with this was um, yeah, mobility issues, uh, another great one. And so uh, that leads us to a few more examples. Um, this is, I'm not going to go as, in much detail because they're, they're similar but different. So three of our art instructors who teach online um, for a 100% online asynchronous course use this and use art steps in three different manners. And so uh, the first one is Anna Davinsky, where she had six different art shows where students place their work by themselves. So we had directions of, okay, uh, we have this designated space for Cassidy H to put your name here. 
Um, and we said, go to this space, look at the wall, and then upload your art gallery. They sometimes have classes of 50 or more. <laughs> uh, so Greg, you'll see that we use the style for yours um, that you did this semester. So we actually placed some artwork outside. Um, because of the great work that was done, she called out some individuals to create their own um, art gallery for all of their work. And, and one is Stevens. And so uh, this is the link to Stevens. Uh, and you'll see kind of his pattern of evolvement uh, for the pictures. Um, the other one is Cookie Redding. And so she did a little bit different. It was only for the final ex exhibition and students submitted images to her and then Cookie put it up, up on art steps for herself. Um, for each of these, it didn't bring it up, but there is a QR code and we will have the links um, in, in chat. So uh, I believe Angie is going to be putting those uh, into there. And the last art example is Zena, and she had her students create an art gallery of a museum. This is more of an introductory level course where they're not really creating their own art, but just kind of art appreciation. And so uh, they had a great way to take images that they had permission to share and find and upload them this to create their, their art gallery. And so this one was proud moments uh, of single motherhood. To wrap things up, as Angie mentioned, some other tools we didn't use was Rec Room uh, because of it not being on a Mac computer, it was not selected uh, for many of the faculty, but we did that have as an option. Uh, but moving forward, we really are going to be using a tool called Spatial I.O., which is different than Spatial Chat. Um, so I'm going to uh, put in chat the URL because I don't we don't have this one. Uh, and this is a Cookie, who is was that last one? is testing the gallery. <laughs> so Greg, yes, this is your great reveal. So this is free. Um, I think there's some issues if you get like 50 people here at a time, but if you just go to spatial and you could explore other ones. Um, the nice part of this, she has a DMD club. So this, you could link rooms together. So if you wanna go to the DMD club room, you could go over here. Um, the reason why we're also moving to this, in addition to being at free, is we wanted the ability to give feedback. So if a piece of art is here, it's really easy to upload artwork. Um, but if I wanted to give feedback, I could quickly add content and add a little sticky note and say, great job. And then we could move this next to it. Um, and so that's why we're moving to kind of this space. So feel free to join this one and check things out. Um, if you just go to spatial.io, you could see there's ones by companies, there's, diff there's different art galleries, et cetera. Um, and so the last few minutes that we have remaining, I just, in case people don't demo, you could see that we're here. And again, I have my audio off. <laughs> um, but it's nice you could create an avatar that really looks like you versus the kind of more uh, gimmicky gimmicky style ones. Uh, and so the last item, uh, there was a few questions of if you haven't used these types of tools before, what are some ideas you might have now? Uh, I think creating an idea of a reason for using this. So. Um, sharing artwork, sharing course examples, if you're going to do something the equivalent of a poster session, um, walking around the room, those are more tangible ways to, to, to utilize these spaces. It doesn't have to be artwork, it could be a PowerPoint slide or an infographic or a video, um, and solving the instructional challenge. So uh, as Greg mentioned, letting them, letting virtual students experience an art gallery, um, 
some of our, our campus locations are not near an art gallery. They have to drive over an hour away. And so um, they get to experience that part that they haven't beforehand. Um, and then uh, because we had the technical issues in the beginning, <laughs> uh, we're going to run out of time, but we are going to have a Padlet to kind of share ideas. Um, but some of the things that we already have is to think about your course modality, if it's in person or online, are you going to be doing a lot of small group work, the equivalent of a poster session? Um, how are you going to take advantage of that, that free movement around the space? So we didn't want people to use this and then lecture a lot during during class. So we really wanted that that student to student interaction. Uh, and so the Padlet, uh, which we could kind of do post uh, event, and again, we'll have everything in, in Discord uh, is here. And so we have some ideas already about how to create an instructional lesson of having a backup plan, how to introduce it to your students, a, a checklist of things to think about. Uh, and then how to plan for the technology uses. So this is using um, what's called ripples. And so all of those are here. Uh, so, so thank you all. Uh, if you're not in Discord, I wanna make sure that we have the URL um, that I know they have the feedback form. Uh, and again, we'll stick around uh, for a, a moment or two since we had those technical difficulties at the beginning. So thank you all so much. Yes, thank you everyone if you need to leave by all means. Amy, there was a, a question here. Is there any cost when designing a new space? Um, and I believe that popped up at our last demo. Okay, yeah, so um, that was, as of now, no. <laughs> uh, the hard thing is they have a creator kit and you have to know a little bit of the more computer program Unity. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you all so much. Thank um, you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Real quick, I left a, a, a link for feedback. Please uh, participate. And again, Amy and I will stick around another minute or two. Thank you so much, George, for hosting us today. Um, if there's any other questions um, that you haven't um, asked, we're happy to, to answer those. If not, happy exploring. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank Bye, you. George. It was a pleasure. Bye. It was nice a pleasure to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.